So check this out. Why do we have this computer chip shortage? How long will this last? And more importantly, as I promised, how does this have to do anything with inflation? Well, check it out. We have computer chips around for decades. I mean, nowadays, though, it's pretty much everywhere. I can count 100 different computer chips just on this desk right now I'm recording on. Easy. It's in everything we use, starting from our phones, our watches, this computer, everything. The problem is that companies over the years have started to make less of them because it's much more lucrative to be a fabless designer. Basically, a fabless means you're not fabricating anything. You're designing, you're outsourcing the manufacturing, basically, to an external party because the margin on the actual fabrication are not as good as designing. It's a straight-up economics game. So everything has been outsourced to this godforsaken island somewhere. I'm just kidding. It's Taiwan. I love Taiwan. I have a t-shirt that actually says that TSMC have become the foundry of the universe. Everything gets fabricated in TSMC as far as computer chips. Everybody's designing. TSMC is making it. Everything is Gucci. Now, we slowly had this trend of people consuming more and more electronics. And that was fine. In fact, from 2019 to 2020, the market, which was already massive, went up by 5%. Now, that may not sound like a lot, but the actual number it got into is $433 billion. When you talk about hundreds of billions, 5% increase is massive. And while the pandemic accelerated the use of personal computers, you know, people are staying at home, working from home, studying from home, playing video games. You know, you can't get a PS5 at this point. Why? Ask yourself why. Not enough chips. Tesla's holding production on Model 3. GM is also holding production or slowing down production. It's pretty much across the board. But why did this actually happen? I mean, the pandemic accelerated the use of computer chips. The market went up. TSMC could have easily adjusted and created more of them, right? And here's something you need to understand, that while the pandemic accelerated the use of chips, essentially what happened, you know, people were working from home, studying from home, playing video games. I mean, a lot more computer chips were being made and sold the entire industry pretty much let the fabs know, hey, we're going to need less of these this year because of the pandemic. What you need to understand that a lot of these fabricators, they work on a five-year plan. It's a lot of capacity. They have to manage it. So they need to know in advance exactly how much chips they're going to be need to be making every single year. They can just turn the knob and make more or less of it. It's very complicated. So while the pandemic started, the automotive industry, as other industries, have pretty much let TSMC know, hey, we're going to take a hit in our sales this year, so we're going to be needing less of these. So the capacity as far as TSMC and other fabs went down just as the pandemic was going up because the classical industries have let TSMC know, hey, we're going to need less. And that's how we got into the situation where the consumption went up parabolically and the production went down because of the classical industries did let them know, hey, we're going to need less. And TSMC could not actually evaluate or anticipate how much the pandemic effects will be long-term on the way we behave, work, enjoy our life. Nobody really know how long the pandemic will last and how much of an impact it will have on our lives beyond the pandemic itself. I've been preaching this for months. I've always told you, hey, our patterns of consumption, of enjoyment, of work have changed forever. And while it may sound that I'm blaming TSMC for bad planning, I'm not. I'm not blaming TSMC at all. And this isn't some political bullshit I'm just saying not to get sued. I think they literally have zero liability in this. This is one of those crazy situations where the blame actually lies on the footsteps of the client. This is the first time the client is not right. The clients here are at fault. The automotive industry, as well as other industries, have completely misevaluated how much chips they'll need this year, fucked the actual production, fucked the actual capacity, and now are asking for more. I'm not saying Tesla did it or Ford did it or GM did it. I'm talking about the entire automotive industry by saying, hey, we're going to need less this year. They've completely skewed the capacity of TSMC. And now they're the first in line screaming, hey, we need more as much as you can get. What the hell were you doing? But just to be clear, the automotive industry and the other classical industries are not 100% to blame for this. There's literally much more blame on the government here. While you can actually blame these companies that went fabulous, Think about it this way. If you were the CEO of a company that makes chips and you can see the numbers right in front of you and it's clearly saying, well, if you just design, the margin on the design is insane. The margins on the actual production are trash. What would you do? You'd pretty much just say, hey, let's outsource this shit to some godforsaken island and let's just focus on design because the margin, the money is there. Every good CEO would make the same decision. That's why I don't really blame the fabulous companies. I blame the government. At this point, the governments 
should have stepped in in Europe, in the US and say, well, the economics are not allowing this to be made in the US and in Europe. But what happens if something happens in China or Taiwan? We're going to get fucked. So let's make sure that we have some sort of capacity in Europe, in the US. So if anything happens, we have enough chips to actually keep going. And you can do it by a hundred different ways, such as subsidies, such as tax incentives, a lot of different things, grants. There's a lot of things the governments could have done to actually prevent this from happening. But of course, nobody thinks about this strategically. They're all busy with their political campaigns. Of course, now the governments are all about it, but it's way too late. And it is a smokescreen to make you not think about the fact that they should have done this six months ago, a year ago, two years ago, five years ago. But how in the world does this have anything to do with inflation, Tom? You promised to us. Well, here's a very simple explanation. I've been preaching this for months. When you have more money in the system, there's more demand for commodities. Prices go up. Inflation. Hello. Now, this is exactly what's going on right now. Because everybody's buying electronics like crazy. Cars, microphones, cameras, computers, everything. PS5, you can't get any. I mean, right? PS5, you can't get a PS5. Look at the price on PS5 online, secondhand. It's literally double than what the retail price is. But it's just one example. When you have this chip shortage, the reason that you have it is because people are buying more commodities. There's more money, more competition for commodities. What do you think will happen when you have this crazy demand for chips? And I'm not talking about the ones I like to eat late at night when nobody sees, when I'm just you know, blaming myself, mm -hmm, chips, chips, chips. <laughs> I'm not talking about the computer chips, right? What do you think will happen? Well, TSMC will have to put more money into infrastructure to increase their capacity. Then, then of course, it's going to make things more expensive. Then, of course, the stuff that you buy will be more expensive. But even without that, what do you think will happen to the price of chips when you know that the manufacturers are actually aware that the demand in the market is much stronger than the supply? I mean, the demand is so crazy. There's not enough product. Automatically, prices have to go up. A straight up one-on-one -on -one economics. When the prices of chips will go up because the demand is so insane and it will the prices of your goods which is these computers these cameras these lights will go up it's just economics it isn't in the price of the burger or the big mac or whatever shit you're buying on the street this shit doesn't happen in a day the price of a big mac doesn't just double overnight it happens slowly it's like cooking a crab in the cold water and they don't even know they're getting cooked that is exactly what's going on with us and that is exactly what i was preaching for months Inflation don't just happen overnight. You don't just fucking wake up and there's, you know, the price of a Big Mac is double. These things take time. And there's a lot of indicators that just creeps up on you like we're seeing right now. You'll slowly see that this thing, the chip shortage, will cause the commodities price to go up. There's a chip in literally every single commodity you can think of. That is why I'm saying inflation is inevitable with so much money in the system and literally zero incentive to save money. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, the perfect recipe for a recession. When you have a lot of inflation and it's growing slowly, when you have high numbers of unemployment, which we have, you're getting stagflation. When the market is stagflating, what happens is that we're slowly creeping up into a recession. In order to prevent this from happening, the Fed will have to raise interest rates. While the interest rates will go up, share prices will go down. It's natural. It will happen. And when this happens, you want to have your portfolio ready. So cut the bullshit. Cut the penny stocks. Let's focus on fundamentals. Good companies that will survive that. Again, I'm going to say this again and again. Fundamentals matter. Invest in good companies with good cash flow that will survive this dip because this is not over yet. And trust me, this thing isn't going to be over this year. And when I'm talking about this thing, I mean the chip shortage or the inflation. It's here to say it's a long problem that will need a solution. So bear with me here. Be careful. Invest with actual patience. I'll see you guys in the next video.